Okay, in setting up the lighting for this video so I don't look kind of one dimensional, I've managed to blind myself. If I look a bit dazed and confused, that is why I literally, I literally cannot see. Queer baiting is shit. I think we can all admit that despite if you are gay, if you are straight, if you are anything in between. I have kind of um, been a little bit pissed off with queer baiting recently. There's a small show that rhymes with her mock. The final episode will be coming out the day of that this goes live, hopefully, if I can edit quickly. Like that has just refueled the fire of just hatred for queer baiting and just how shit it is. And so I thought today I would just do a rant as a queer person who is sick to death of not being represented. <laughs> for those of you who are not aware of what queer baiting is, Wikipedia describes queerbaiting as what happens when people in the media add homoerotic tension between two characters to attract more liberal and queer viewers with the indication of them not ever getting together for real. The term is used to describe a tactic when a queer relationship or character is hinted to attract or appeal to the queer market and then is denied, either by modifying the character's behaviour, playing it off as a joke, or denying the assumptions in like interviews or panels without modifying that character's behaviour. But you will probably be able to think of instances, the ones that come to mind when I am kind of thinking of queer baiting is Steric, which is was was disgusting. For those of you who are not aware, Steric is Styles and Derek from Teen Wolf. I'll put links down below to everything I talk about because I do have a limited amount of time and a lot of feelings. And also I watched Pride last night, so <laughs> my militancy is a, is a little bit more up than usual. The thing, the thing in that definition that I think is on most, is most TV shows that is classed as queer baiting, so Steric, Dastiel, John Locke, Murtha, um, is the, they deny it as actors and directors and writers, but they don't change that behaviour. Unknowingly writing characters that could be class as gay, I mean unknowingly is a bit of an odd word but you know what I mean, like unintentionally that's fine, it's unknowing so you don't know you're leading on a community, you don't know like, you're leading on your audience, you don't, you're not aware of that but if you start addressing it in panels and that's what got to me with Steric is if you start addressing it in panels and you start talking about it it becomes very obvious that it is a manufactured thing, it is something that you as a writer or a director, you know it's something that you thought about, it's something that you kind of go oh yeah they, they could be gay, we're not gonna make them gay but look we're getting we're getting audience, we're getting viewers, we're getting money because people think they might be gay, let's let's carry on with that, we're obviously doing something right. I don't know if it is just a money thing like oh we can get viewers and stuff but we don't have to commit um, I don't know if it's a fear thing, the knowledge that you are attracting viewers because of this, but you don't want to lose other viewers. The thing, the thing that really pisses me off here is, despite, you know, whatever reason it is, at the end of the day, if you are addressing it and you know that you're doing it, um, and you know that it, that is a quality of your show that people see and relate to, and you're not going to pay off or address it in the show, um, that is an exploitation of a demographic that is desperate for representation. That is an exploitation of a demographic that deserves representation and good representation. You know, I don't want to be told that if I sleep with a girl, one of us is going to die. Or if I sleep with a girl, one of us has to be a stereotype, one of us has to be like a butch lesbian. People don't want to be told that they either have to live up to a stereotype or die. That is the essence of queer baiting. Is queer baiting is just these huge shows with these huge fandoms and this like the budgets and just everything a good TV show should have, with an obvious intent of portraying queer relationships, of portraying these really great queer characters, or they could be queer, and instead of you know going ahead with it fully and kind of committing. They are just exploit exploiting and um, using an audience that feels extremely let down. The best way I can describe queerbaiting to 
someone who isn't queer or doesn't really get queer baiting and doesn't get why that's a bad thing is the really shit teen films where um the re like the really really shit teen rom-coms where you've got like the popular guy and all his friends are like oh I bet you can't get the girl to the prom but you can't get the nerdy girl to fall in love with you um and you know it inevitably happens they fall in love um and then there's always the scene where she's like walking somewhere or something and you've got the group of guys and they're like oh here's your money i can't believe you actually got to do it that's so stupid she's an idiot that that feeling of like humiliation and um exploitation and just you're just so disgusted and manipulated like that feeling that that girl would have in the film is pretty much what lgbt communities feel when you've got queer baiting because you put in this effort you put in you know your time you sometimes put in your money depending on where you're watching the show just for the producers to go around and go nah. good representation or no representation don't do this in between shit don't give me platonic romances don't fucking do that or a love story between two men that isn't a love story it's really just platonic if you're calling something a love story you know you know that there is romantic um intent you know that you could read it romantically why are you fucking bullshitting people if you don't want to pull through with your lgbt representation don't fucking start it in the first place the T tjlc people have got huge theories and it it's both motivating and really really hard to read because it is people so desperate for lgbt representation especially in characters that they've fallen in love with that they relate to that they want to support and love and that is what gets me and that is the thing that kind of upsets me a little bit because i don't think a lot of the creators understand that although saying that mark gatiss and jeff davis need to sit down with me i'm just gonna shout at them for like half an hour because if you're gay and you're writing queer baiting scripts what's wrong with you what's wrong with you like don't write queer baiting stuff just fucking write them as queer just fucking write queer characters isn't that revolutionary that essence of queer baiting that you created these beautifully made characters who could just be so great as representation and it just it just gets me that it's become such a normal thing and that you know it's like oh they're not gay it's just friendship bromance queerness isn't just fuck off okay just let me be queer and just let the characters i love have be queer as well because god knows you're trying to write them like they're queer so just let them actually be queer and anybody who doesn't like that in the audience can fuck off. There wasn't really a point in this video, I just felt really fucking angry. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that there is a multiple ending or you know something happens tomorrow that means that queer baiting isn't a thing that actually is happening. Uh, I don't believe that it will. I don't. That's the cynic in me coming out. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really sorry that there wasn't really a point to this. I was just angry kind of proud of my sexuality and fed up of the media not really being proud of me and who I am um but yeah I will see you next time thank you for watching bye